Hello, dear students. We are now in the second quarter lessons in Mathematics 7. For lesson 1, I will be discussing Introduction to Measurement. By the way, this is teacher MJ Palara. Join me as we learn our lesson for today. Our most essential learning competency is for you, dear learners, to be able to approximate the measures of quantities, particularly length, weight or mass, volume, time, angle, and temperature, as well as rate. And for the references, it is listed down, but the primary source or the reference that I've used is the second quarter compendium of notes in Mathematics 7 by the school's division of Tarlac Province. Before we begin, let us do this activity. Let's investigate. As you can see in column 1, we have a series of questions and in column B, we have the measurements. As you read the questions, what do you think are the measures that we have to find in order to answer them? I will give you some time to think and match column A with column B. Alright, let's start with number one. When we are asking how old are you, we are referring to measure of time. The answer in number one is D or time. When we are asking how tall you are or how tall are you, we are referring to measure of or measures of length, which is letter B. Number three, if we are asking how hot is it today, we are referring to temperature. Number four, how much do you weigh refers to measures of weight or mass. And for number five, how much water may be filled in your tumbler? That question can be answered when we get the capacity or volume of the container. So for number five, our answer should be letter A. With those examples, let us look at um, some of the other questions that we take in mind. Aside from those questions, we can also consider the following questions. For measures of length, we can include how tall, how far, or how long an object is. For weight, of, for weight or mass, we can consider how heavy an object is. For capacity or volume, we can ask how much can it contain. For time, we can refer to age or how long will it finish, how long will it take someone to finish a job or other questions. And for temperature, we usually focus on the hotness or coldness. Okay, so we can ask how hot or how cold. With those questions, I know that you now have an idea about the definition of measurement. So you may think of some words that you can relate with measurement. Okay, but here is the definition as it was stated in our compendium of notes. Measurement is the process by which human beings obtain quantitative information about the different physical aspects of objects such as length, weight, area, volume, time, and temperature. The word measure comes from the Latin word mensura and from the Greek word metron. Now, we have two systems of measurement. The first one is the metric or the decimal system. For length, our base unit is meter. For weight or mass, 
it is gram. For capacity or volume, our base unit is liter or capital L. The other system of measurement is the U.S. standard system or the English system. Here are the base units. For length, it is yard or YD. For weight or mass, pound or LB. Capacity or volume, its base unit is gallon or gal. Let us start with the measures of length. What are the tools that we use to measure length? Can you identify some? That's correct. So here are some of the objects that we use to measure length. And we can list ruler, tape measure, meter stick, triangle, and T-square, and other tools. Now, let us look at some of the most common measures or units of measures that we use in measuring length. For English measures, we have inch, foot, yard, mile. And for the metric measures, we have the following, millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, meter, decameter, hectometer, and kilometer. As you can see in the metric measures, our units have prefixes. We have milli, centi, deci, and we are just adding our base unit, which is meter. So for you to identify if a unit is metric or English, if you can see that it is using prefixes such as this ones, then that is already a metric unit of measurement. So again, remember that the base unit for English measures of length is yard, and for the metric unit of length is meter. Now, let us try to approximate measures of length. But before that, let us familiarize ourselves with the ruler. For instance, you have with you your ruler. So the lines here represent some of the measures that we have learned a while ago. For millimeter, you can see there the label MM. And these are the distances between these smaller lines is one millimeter. When we count 10 of those, so we will have one centimeter. That's why it is labeled there CM, that is four centimeter. And if you look at your ruler, that will end at approximately 30 centimeters. So you can say that a ruler, the standard ruler that we use, is approximately 30 centimeters. As for the inch on the other side, so we have there 0, 1, as long as you can see the um, larger distances compared to that of centimeter, that is the measurement for inch. And a ruler, a ruler's length is 12 inches. And 12 inches is equivalent to one foot. Take note of that. For us to visualize some of the real life representations of our units, I will present to you some of the objects that we can use to approximate measures of length. For centimeter, you can refer to the distance between the tip of your finger 
from this point to this point. So that is approximately one centimeter. Okay, so you now have an idea of how one centimeter measures. How about an inch? In this example, we have a coin. If you measure the diameter of this coin, that will approximately measure one inch. So that is the approximate measure of an inch. For a foot, we can consider the length of a ruler or if you have a pad or clipboard with you, so the length of that clipboard is approximately one foot. For yard, if you have a door in front of you, you just look at the distance or at the width of the door and that is approximately the measurement of one yard. Okay, one yard. And meter is slightly larger because one meter is approximately about the width of one and a half door. Okay, one and one half doors. As for kilometer, now that you have visualized the length of one meter, or you just think of the length of a meter stick, if you are going to connect 1,000 meter sticks, you will come up with one kilometer. Can you imagine how long that is? Okay, so that is the approximation of one kilometer. Okay. And for a larger unit, we have mile, which is approximately four times around a track. This time, we move on to measures of weight or mass. Can you identify some tools that we use in measuring weight or mass? All right, so in this figure, we can see different types of weighing scales and balances which we could use to measure weight or mass. Here are some of the common units that we use in measuring weight or mass. For the English measures, we, we use ounces, pound, which is the base unit, ton and metric ton. For metric measures, we again um, use the prefixes milli, centi, deci, deca, hecto, and kilo, adding our base unit, which is gram. So we have milligram, centigram, and so on. For us to visualize the measures of those units, let us look at some of these approximations. For the weight of a gram, imagine that you have with you a paper clip. That paper clip um, weighs approximately one gram. Okay, again, one gram. So if you have 1,000 paper clips with you and you try to weigh them, so the measurement or the weight of that 1,000 pieces of paper clips is one kilogram, okay? With that, we can um, say that one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. That will be our lesson for next week. Also, a kilogram can be approximated through the weight of a kitten. So if you have a kitten, you try carrying that, and that is the measurement of a kilogram 
or you can try in your kitchen you try to look at one kilogram of sugar if it's unopened or other um, condiments okay that weighs one kilogram and you will have an idea of how a kilogram measures the next one is volume or capacity we have our English measures, our common English measures for volume or capacity. We have fluid ounces, cups, pint, quart, and gallon, which is our base unit. As for the metric measures, we have milliliter, centiliter, deciliter, liter, which is our base unit, decaliter, hectoliter, and kiloliter. Again, we are just adding the base unit liter to our prefixes. Okay. And for us to have a real life representation of those units, if you have a dropper with you, if you are going to get um, water or a liquid, using that dropper and you drop it a little so a drop of that is approximately one milliliter or you can base um, you can base one milliliter on the lines that you can see in the dropper you can see there ml 1 ml 2 ml and so on as for a liter if you are fond of drinking soft drinks, so you can see already that um, one bottle of a Coca-Cola or a pop um, measures one liter. So it is already written in the packaging, right? If it is one liter, 1.5 liters or two liters. So now you have an idea of what a liter or how large a liter is. That ends our lesson for week one, wherein we've discussed how to approximate units of measures. For our next video, I will be discussing how to convert measurements from one unit to another, and I hope that you will watch that. For now, goodbye. And I hope that you continue to love math. Bye!